Hello folks and welcome. As uh, someone who spent the better part of their career, 30 some years doing aerospace, and also a Navy vet, I still take an interest in military hardware. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there. I like to kind of reminisce about some stuff and also just like to see what's new. So uh, today we are checking out why no nation wants to fight the B-2 bomber. You know, some of the stuff I may already know, I could learn some new stuff. So if you like what you see and want me to check out some other stuff, uh, for one, make sure to comment down below and also click and submit. Let's check it out. Mm -mm. Why no nation wants to fight the B-2 bomber. Because it will blow your ass up. Should you venture out to one of the air shows periodically held near White Air Force that Base in Missouri, you may be so fortunate to spot one of the world's most otherworldly aircraft. Now, I have seen these in life before. I think only twice before, and they were by an Air Force Base. Because, of course. The Manta-like B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. The Spirit swept wings measure 52 meters across, half the length of a football field, and its cockpit bulges organically Man, from the surface big. like that of a 1950s a cool era sci-fi spaceship, contrasting dramatically with the jagged near 45 degree angles of its trailing edges. Why does the B-2 look so weird? And how does that help it evade radar? This, The Spirit I do was know. designed late in the Cold War to slip through the Soviet Union's formidable integrated air defense network, combining ground-based radars, surface-to-air missiles, and aerial interceptors and radar. Hold on, I want to go back and look, look at something real quick. Take a look at this right here, uh, the Soviet aircraft, and it's kind of typical, I would say. Look how rough a lot of this is. So, when you've been hearing lately, like, some uh, Soviet, area, Soviet era planes have been having some issues, well, this is why the workmanship has not been the best interceptors and radar planes. Radars were a linchpin of any modern air defense system, so the Pentagon sought a stealth plane with such a minimal radar cross-section that it could only be detected at very short ranges. The, F the Air Force's first stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk, was a promising start, but it could only carry two bombs over 900 miles unrefueled. And side note, I did find that very odd that it was labeled an F as in a fighter jet, but as you see, it was doing basically just bombing. That was it. No idea why it was labeled F. Not far enough to deliver a strategic strike deep inside enemy territory. In the 1930s and 1940s, aviation the engineers had experimented with flying wing designs like Nazi Germany's Horton Ho 229 and the US XB-35 and YB-49. Flying wings generate additional lift and coincidentally are conducive to low radar cross sections because their flat surfaces minimize opportunities for radar waves to bounce off them. However, pure flying wings lack tail control surfaces, often leading to fatal aerodynamic instability. The B-2's design came at a turning point when fly-by-wire controls were entering widespread use. These mediate a pilot's commands through an electronic interface rather than directly via hydraulics, allowing a computer to compensate for unstable flight characteristics. All right, so something that it hinted at on here, and you'll see that this and some of those older ones that they talked about, uh, you can say they kind of mimic birds because birds do not have vertical stabilizers. What they do is they have very fine control over their tail feathers and their wingtips and they can roll really quick and do all sorts of stuff and therefore also maintain stability throughout flight. That is what this is doing and that uh, before you had to have simple inputs so it was pretty much next to impossible. But now when you have a computer controlling stuff, you can do this. So uh, I imagine more aircraft going forward like the new B-21 that was unveiled, it's doing the same thing. But then also, I saw some renderings of like the NGAD, the Next Generation Air Dominance, and it has the same thing as well. So I'd like to see how that plays out and like how maneuverable it can be, because the good thing with the vertical stabilizers, you could be very maneuverable because you, 
you'd had that much more stability and plus you were able to yaw uh, much easier. So let's see how things play out. The Spirit's quadruple redundant system, for example, manipulates flaps on the wings and engine thrust differentially to perform turns that most aircraft would rely on tail rudders and elevators to perform. Jet engines are a common weak point in stealth designs as they feature that radar conspicuous so cool. fan blades and generate hot engine exhaust that lights up infrared sensors. To avoid this vulnerability, the Spirit's intakes are mounted on the top of the wings and funneled air through S-shaped ducts to four F-118 turbofans buried deep inside the plane. This configuration dampens both the B-2's acoustic and infrared signature. The Spirit furthermore employs secondary inlets that scoop up cold barrier air surrounding the bomber and mix it with the hot exhaust, which is then expelled over a flattened titanium carbon fiber surface to further diffuse the heat signature. Another key aspect of the B-2's low observability are yeah, with uh, what I was saying ab about the exhaust, that's actually something I think is really cool in that uh, <clears throat> they made these S-shaped -shaped ducts. So if you were looking at the plane sideways, uh, I can't remember if they go up and down or like kind of a left to right. But either way, uh, straightforward, there is no uh, like directly seeing the engine from the intake and therefore, you know, it avoids... Uh, radar reflecting off the blades off the exhaust uh, that I thought was like a really cool innovation I remember when this was unveiled uh, this is in like mid late 80s I think it was 1988 or something and when they unveiled that you could only see the front and the back was closed off you could not see this they restricted that and so they didn't want people to know like what exactly what was going on uh you know for that what am i trying to say they uh they didn't want people to know like okay we have this this uh stealth which you can see from up front and from the side but we don't know what is giving it this big advantage and one of the really big advantages was how the exhaust was set up and i mean now we can see it and it doesn't seem like it's you know that big of a deal but back then it was radar absorbent materials the b2 skin is already primarily made up mostly of non-conductive carbon graphite composite mixed with titanium the most reflective areas such as the intakes flaps and leading edges of the wings are sprayed with additional radar absorbent material coatings which have been repeatedly tweaked over the years furthermore the skin is coated with an elastomer an elastic rubber-like polymer meant to smooth away seams, screws, or joints between different materials, which might create a chink in its stealthy geometry. Altogether, these features reduce a B-2's radar cross-section to roughly 0.1 to 0.05 meters squared. That's pretty cool if they could fill in the gaps with the polymer. Front, the B-2 is designed to remain low observable from all angles as it's intended to penetrate deep into enemy airspace. Spirits are camouflaged for daytime as well as night strikes with non-reflective dark gray paint designed to blend in with the sky at distances of 23 miles or greater. The B-2 also sports or special bays designed to release chemicals to obscure contrails, but those were never used operationally. Instead, the Spirit has a LIDAR sensor to detect contrails, giving the pilot a chance to change altitude to eliminate them. I've never heard anyone the say Spirit LIDAR. Is designed Always to fly heard across LIDAR. the globe while carrying 20 to 30 tons of weapons, but not to do exceptionally quickly. Its turbofans lack afterburners, which in any case would cause infrared and even radar signature to bloom. The Spirit's top speed is 630 miles per hour, which means it's a bit faster than a jumbo jet while its range of five to 7,000 miles is usually multiplied by two to four aerial refuelings using a pop-up hatch behind the cockpit. This has allowed B-2s to fly nonstop missions lasting nearly two days from Whiteman in Missouri to hit targets across the globe. A Spirit's cross-trained crew of two, a mission commander and a pilot, enter the plane via a hatch in the belly. The bomber has room for one crew member to- Okay, before it gets into this section, uh... So it mentioned that it does not have afterburners like the B-1 does. And there's a very obvious reason for that. Well, for one, it's not nearly as fuel efficient. Afterburners take up a lot of freaking fuel to, uh, you know, get up to, you know, the speeds they can do. It's, yeah, you can go much faster, but it, it burns 
like a ridiculous amount more fuel. It doesn't, you know, stay linear, the uh, fuel consumption. The other obvious reason is that that takes away from the stealth because, well, what if you are, if you have afterburners that have the ability to break the speed of sound, well, now you're advertising where you are. For one, a lot of the stuff is at night, so afterburners, you can see them. And then also, of course, the freaking sound. And that's just going to be giving your position away to the enemy. A nap in ships, as well as a toilet and space to store food in a microwave. Though spirits routinely use GPS navigation, they can get along just fine if navigation satellites are knocked out by using a star-oriented inertial navigation system backed up by a terrain recognition-based system. That's really Satellite cool. links and very high frequency radio allow the crew to receive mission updates, such as the cancellation of a planned target. Plan that can read when the stars. When a B2 bomber approaches defended airspace, it enters stealth mode, retracting antennas, cutting off certain communication links, and even restricting the use of its flaps. If threatened by long range radars and missiles over a wide area, it may descend to low altitude to reduce detection range. Its terrain following system allowing the huge bomber to skim as low as 200 feet above the ground. Unlike the earlier Nighthawk, the B-2 bomber is equipped that. with an APQ-181 low probability is, of intercept radar that has been updated to an even stealthier active electronically scanned array model in 2010. Useful for navigation and scanning ground targets, it can also plot the position of hostile fighters and radars. That data is fed to the bomber's APR-63 defensive measure suite allowing the mission commander to adjust the pre-programmed flight path to slip in between areas of dense radar coverage and avoid interceptors. Arguably, the latter posed the greatest threat to the B-2. Already low bandwidth radars may detect the presence, but not the precise location of stealth aircraft. Should a hostile fighter close within a few dozen miles, the Spirit would be vulnerable to visual, infrared, and even radar detection. Lacking self-defense weapons or high speed, the B-2's odds of survival in that scenario would be pretty low. For its nuclear strike mission, it still its most though. important role today, the B-2 can That's carry up bombs. to 16 B-61 or megaton yielded B-83 nuclear gravity bombs on the rotary launchers inside its two bomb bays. A Spirit's avionics are hardened versus the electromagnetic pulses generated by nuclear blasts, and the pilots are offered creepy white face masks to shield their eyes from the flash of detonation. I love seeing stuff However, like However, the fall of the Soviet Union prompted the Air Force to hastily adapt the B-2 for like conventional weapons buster. delivery. An alternate rack system can accommodate up to 80 Mark 82 500 pound bombs or an equivalent weight in cluster bombs, mines, or larger munitions. In the late 1990s, the lot. B-2 was adapted to carry 2,000 pound JDAM GPS guided weapons, which are accurate within a 20 foot radius God and have Damn. served as its primary <laughs> weapon ever since. The B-2 is also certified to carry long-range AGM-154 JSAO glide bombs, 80 miles, and AGM-158 JASM stealth cruise missiles, 230 to 575 miles, to allow it to deliver standoff attacks without risking getting too close to increasingly powerful modern air defense radars. Most exotically, the B-2 is uniquely configured to deploy up to two massive 30,000-pound GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrators <laughs> designed to blast apart command bunkers up to 60... Dude, one of those is freaking, you know, enormous, but Jesus Christ, too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. One meters underground, a capability meant to threaten decapitation of hostile foreign leaders and destruction of subterranean weapons facilities. The B-2's ability to deliver such devastating weapons deep within the most well-defended airspace make it a premium, highly specialized war machine without equivalent. At least unless China develops a decent H-20 stealth bomber. So far, mm. B-2's have mostly leveraged their range and payload rather I don't than think China's as far as a lot of people operations. think they are. However, the Spirit's awesome fire... Oh. Go back one moment. ...rather than right. stealth for... Who can tell me what the aircraft on the right are? I can tell by the nose cones. Actual combat operations. However, the Spirit's awesome firepower and low observable characteristics will never be tested in the kinds of high intensity and likely nuclear great power conflict it was designed to fight. Mm.
It's a lot of wind noise. Is that done? Yeah, it is. That is pretty much it. All right, so I thought that was pretty good. That was that was pretty well presented. Like the uh, the narrator's voice. One thing that I did want to talk about as well it, that was not mentioned in here. This thing is freaking expensive. So I think adjust for inflation, they were like over two billion dollars a piece, something like that. They are ginormously expensive, or maybe it wasn't. I think it's something else. Let me know if you happen to know the uh, the the cost of these, what it was, and what it was, uh, or what it is now, like adjusted for inflation, because these things are ridiculously expensive, and as such, they're going to be expensive to maintain. I mean, it looks so futuristic still, and it's hard to believe that this thing was unveiled in uh, the late 80s, which means they've been working on it for quite a while before that, because to bring an aircraft uh, uh, into service, it takes a long time, like like about 10 years, if not more. Uh, it's going to be kind of interesting to, to see, because, I mean, this thing is still unmatched anywhere in the world, but yet... It is going to be replaced because it is getting old. There's a lot newer technology out there, and the the new one, the B-21 Raider, is going to be replacing it. And I believe it's a, a smaller version of basically the same thing, except with a lot newer technology as well. And I think something else that could have been mentioned in that, let's say, uh, now with some of these like strike missions that it's doing, that it's probably getting paired with... Uh, F-22s, and it probably has been quite a bit to have defense for at least like a significantly longer portion of uh, where it was going to go. Like it, it's probably before had escorts of F-15s, F-16s up to a certain point, and then they had to bail because they could be detected as where this really could not. Well, now if you have something like F-22s with it, those F-22s can, you know, come a lot farther than, you know, probably help give the pilots a you know some peace of mind that you know they're protected more because if they are spotted yeah they're they're screwed <laughs> all right so i hope you enjoyed that i i did i love this thing it things like an absolutely amazing aircraft and yeah i want to see what its uh, successor is going to be doing and well yeah i want to be checking out uh, some more videos as well because i love more i do love military hardware from all over the world. You know, I don't care if it's American, if it's Russian, British. I love them all. So let me know like what ones you would want me to check out. And more specifically, if there's a really good video about them, I want to see that as well. So thank you everyone for stopping by, and I shall talk to you all later.